In this video, we'll talk about the protocol for umpiring a baseball or softball game with two umpires. We'll go over what should happen before and after the game in order to ensure good communication and good calls, as well as positioning and the responsibilities of both the plate and the base umpire. The main point throughout this video for a two umpire crew is communication. And this starts before the game even begins. If you're on a game with another umpire, make sure that you get in contact with them a day in advance. Let them know that you'll be working with them and then you'll want to talk about a few things for when you guys get to the field. For example, you want to decide what color shirts you're going to wear. Here at our company, the official uniform is either black or baby blue shirts. This means that the umpires working a two-man crew must decide which of those colors to wear. Next, you'll also want to decide who is going to be behind the plate and who is going to be doing the bases. If you have two games, then you should alternate between the plate and the bases before the first and second game. If you have more than two games, I recommend switching every other game, working two games in each position and then rotating. You both should arrive at your game at least 15 minutes early. I recommend 20 to 25 in order to meet with your partner, make sure that everything is in order, and that way you two can discuss what responsibilities each of you would have throughout the game. Umpires from different regions across the country have been taught differently in certain areas, but here are a few general rules to follow, especially if you're a brand new umpire to two-man crews. Some of these things include who will be calling the catch, who will be looking at tagging up, and who will be watching the runners touch all the bases. For these situations, I recommend that the base umpire make sure that all of the runners touch the bases as he is rotating with them. The home plate umpire should get catches in the outfield unless there is a play that a runner may tag up, in which case the base umpire should get the catch while the home plate umpire should get the tag. The last thing is that the home plate umpire should be getting fair and foul in almost every situation. There's one exception to this that we'll talk about in just a minute. Let's go over the umpire positioning for two-man crews. The home plate umpire will obviously be positioned behind home plate with some minimum rotation. We'll talk about those rotations in just a minute. The base umpire has three different positions that they will need to rotate to. The first position is referred to as position A. This is the position about 10 to 15 feet past first base while a few feet in foul territory. Make sure that you're in foul territory so that you don't get hit with a live baseball. And if you do get hit, you know that it's a foul ball. You'll be in position A when there are no runners on base. The next two positions are located behind the pitcher's mound. If you were to draw a line from home plate past the edge of the pitcher's mound towards first base, you would find position B. And if you were to do the same on the other side towards third base, that's where you would find position C. You'll be in position B whenever there's a runner on first or a runner on first and third. And you'll be in position C if there's just a runner on third, a runner on first and second, or if the bases are loaded. Those are the three positions for the base umpire. But now let's talk about the responsibilities in each position as well where to move as plays are being made. Let's start with position A. Once again, position A is when there are no runners on base. Position A is also the only time that you would help the home plate umpire with fair and foul if there is a ball down the first base fair foul line. If the ball is in the outfield, then you can help the home plate umpire by calling fair or foul. When in position A, it's also important that you look for check swings. You're in prime position to make a call if the catcher asks the home plate umpire to make an appeal to you on a swing. It's important for the base umpire on every pitch to be paying attention. Just because you're not making a call on ball or strike does not mean that you don't have things that you'll need to look for. When you're in A, you're looking for check swings. When you're in B and C, you're looking for box. There's always something to be looking for while on the bases. So never stop paying attention. On a routine ground ball where the play is going to be at first, You'll want to move inside the fair and foul line by about six to eight feet. You don't want to move too far where you can no longer see the play because that's now behind you, but you also want to move in a little bit so that you can watch first base for a pulled foot and make sure that the runner makes contact with first base. While the play is developing, here's what you should be watching. You should watch the batter hit the ball. You should watch the ball travel along the ground. You should see the fielder pick up the ball. You should see the fielder throw the ball, and once you see that the fielder has thrown the ball to first base, while the ball is traveling in the air is when you will now look at first base in order to make the call safer out. Good timing is always important on these calls as it is with every single call that an umpire makes. For an out call, make sure that the ball beats him there, that you have a solid catch, and that you have voluntary release from the first baseman's glove before you render a decision and call him out. If you make your call too fast, there's always an opportunity that the first baseman will drop the ball or come off the bag, and now you have to change your call mid-game, which doesn't look good for anybody. Same thing goes for safe calls. Make sure that the runner touches first base and that he doesn't make an attempt towards second where he could be tagged out. Make sure that the play is over before you render a decision and call him safe. 
The only time in A that you're going to make a call on a catch is if it's right in front of you. Every other time, the home plate umpire should be making calls on outfield and infield catches. Now let's talk about what happens as a longer play is developing, such as a double or a triple or even an inside the park home run. Where should you be moving to? Well, as the runner rounds first base, what you'll want to do is you'll want to cut behind him and start moving towards the B position. Make sure that you give the runner enough space so that if he changes his mind and runs back, you won't be in his way and interfere with the play but you also want to be moving quickly so that you can keep up with him. As this is happening, you also need to make sure that you're watching him touch the bases so that later, if they appeal that he touched the base, you know exactly what you saw and you can either call him safer out. If the play looks like it's going to be more than a double, such as a triple or an inside the park home run, then the plate umpire also needs to rotate. If the plate umpire is at home and the base umpire is at A, the plate umpire should be making tag calls at third base. The plate umpire should rotate up the third base line towards third base, and as the runner is running towards third, the base umpire should be now moving towards home in case a ball gets away or in case the runner runs past third and now wants to try for an inside the park home run. The base umpire will be making safer out calls at home plate when they start in the A position. Now let's talk about the B position. A reminder that you're only going to be in B if there's a runner on first, or runners on first and third. If there's a runner on first, make sure that you crouch down facing first base. That way you can move your head and just swivel to see if there's a pickoff. You shouldn't need to move your body very much. That way you're always in position and can react quickly to the play. This is also when you're going to want to start looking for box. A general rule is that the plate umpire should be watching for box in the pitcher's glove, shoulders, and upper body while the base umpire should be watching their feet to make sure they don't balk. If there's runners on first and third, you should still crouch down in a good ready position, but you should be square to the field. That way you can swivel your head and see if there's a pickoff at third, while also doing the same to see if there's a pickoff at first base. When the ball is hit and in play, you'll want your body to face the ball. That way you can watch the play develop while not pre-anticipating any plays. You don't want to start moving towards a certain base and then the play end up being somewhere else. You want to follow the play as it's happening. For example, a ball hit on the ground to the shortstop. You want to watch go into the shortstop's glove and then move out of the way so that he can make a clean throw to any of the bases. However, you should still be watching the play happen so that if he throws home with a runner on third base, you can now move to first base and start watching the runner there rather than worrying about the runner on third base. The same principle applies in C in that when there's a ball in play, you want to face the ball and watch the play develop and not move in the wrong direction before you know where the play is going to be. Let's talk about the C position now. You will only be in the C position if there's a runner on first and second, a runner only on third base, or if the bases are loaded. You should still be watching for box while in the C position, so you want to make sure that you're in a good ready position with your head in a position that you can swivel to any base that there might be a pickoff while still watching the pitcher's feet. In both the B and C positions, if there's going to be a play at first, you will want to start moving towards first base. That way, when you make the call, you're closer to it than you were when the play started. This is both for you so that you have a better vantage point, but also it looks better to the coaches and the players and the fans around you are selling the call that you are closer than it would have been if you would have stayed in your position. You're tracking the play, watching it happen, and you're in position to make a good call. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, communication between the two umpires is one of the most important things. It's helpful even as players are developing to talk with one another. For example, while the base umpire is watching all of the runners touch all the bases, the plate umpire should be watching the play develop so that if it takes an unexpected turn, they can appropriately rotate and be in the correct positions. If you're the plate umpire and there's a long ball hit into the outfield while the base umpire is coming from A position, it's helpful to tell him I've got third so that he knows to rotate home on a really long play such as a triple or an inside the park home run. While there are many signs for communicating between plate and base umpires, there are three that you should start knowing. The first is that you should know how to communicate infield fly. This will help both umpires be prepared before the play happens, as you need to know the situation where an infield fly could occur so that you can call it while the ball's in the air. If there's a situation where infield fly is in effect, you'll put your hand up open to your face to signal that there's no outs and infield fly is in effect. However, if there's one out, you'll do it with just one finger 
so that way both umpires know one out infield fly is in effect. Whenever the ball goes straight up into the air, this is usually a call that I have the plate umpire make. While it's true that the base umpire is closer to the infielders and he can see where exactly the ball may be that they can reach with ordinary effort, it's helpful for the base umpire to simply point into the air to signal infield fly and let the home plate umpire make the call and call the batter out. This is something that you'll want to talk about before the game and whether or not the plate umpire or the base umpire is going to call infield fly. The second signal that you'll want to do is giving outs before the play. Well, sometimes these signals are paired with rotation signals. When you're just starting out with two-man crews, it's helpful just to give the outs to whichever umpire you're working. If there's one out, just simply put one finger down pointing towards the ground to signal one out. Same thing with two outs. The last signal that's helpful to communicate between two umpires is a timing play. For example, if there's two outs and a runner only on second, it's possible that on a double, you may have a play at the plate while also having a tag play possible in the field. What you'll want to do is know whether or not the run scored before the tag was made so that you can tell if the run would count. This you can signal by simply putting up two fingers and pointing to your wrist to signal timing play. Whenever an umpire gives these signals, the other umpire should mirror them back, simply demonstrating that he knows exactly what he's talking about and he's also prepared for the next situation. Once again, one of the biggest pieces of two-man crews is communication. Always be communicating with your partner before the game and as plays are going on, telling him where you're going to be and where you need to rotate to. Two-man crews are a great opportunity for umpires to work together and for younger umpires with less experience to learn from some older umpires who've been doing it for a while. For me personally, most of the umpire growth I had was working two-man crews with umpires that had worked for many years, some even working in state finals and championships, giving me tips and helping me improve in my umpiring. It's always helpful after the game to ask your partner for some things that were helpful that you did during the game and some things that weren't helpful. That way, before your next two-man game, you can know how to communicate better with your partner and to work better as a team.